I'm Amir. I run Bernardo Castrop's weekly Q&A membership program with realityinmind.com. And this is an excerpt from one of those sessions in which we were joined by Michael Levin as guest, filmed on the 26th of September 2025. If you enjoy this, you might like to join a Q&A that we're hosting with Michael Levin and Bernardo Castrop next week, the 18th of November. You can find us at withrealityinmind.com or join it as a one-off event via the link in the comments and description below. Someone in the chat, Michael, was curious if you could uh, use this um, age-reversing technology uh, <laughs> or capacity you discovered in cells. And <laughs> I would we, take we the are 20%. Working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, we are we are definitely working on it. That's that's the goal. I believe me, everyone, I feel the urgency. I get all these I get all these phone calls that are like, what do you do? I'm like, hurry up. You know, what are you what are you messing around for? Let's go. And uh, yes, I, I, I feel the urgency. We are we are doing the best we can. Yeah, I think the cancer angle is more urgent than age reversal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter that you are young if you still are cancer is right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that frog that's probably still alive, I don't know, maybe he died of natural causes now, but uh, that frog frogs, needs to be followed up. <laughs> yeah, fr frogs live up to 30 years. So like, uh, it's it's not a fast, uh, it's not a fast yeah. model system, you know. Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I get it. And uh, I mean, I think really, realistically, I think the root of all of this is regeneration. I think that if we can crack the regeneration problem, all the other dominoes fall, aging, uh, cancer, all, all of that stuff will be downstream of, of they're, they're all special cases of a failure to regenerate. And so uh, this is, I think, fundamental. So, so we're, you know, which, which in turn is fundamental, you know, is based on the, the more, the, the, the deeper question, which is how does the repair machinery know what the heck they should be making? You know, they all have, you know, whether, whether anthrobot or human body, they have exactly the same genome. So, so the question is under various circumstances, how do you know what you should be building, right? And so this is like, if we, with the, the insight, hopefully we get into that, uh, I think is gonna feed all of this stuff. Do you have any idea in your own mind? Suppose there's nobody watching. <laughs> um, do you have any idea in your mind what a reasonable, plausible timeline would be to, to clinically apply this to, to cancer? Well, I mean, the cancer stuff, uh, okay, uh, well, people are watching, so I have to, the thing is, uh, right, I mean, look, any any actual number I give you is going to be nonsense, because every day, things change in terms of, of regulatory funding, you I mean, you've seen the news, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's craziness all the time. So, so I don't, you know, not to mention the science, of course, is unpredictable. So, okay, but, but, but just to have, you know, in terms of my own planning, and, 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 and uh, how we're doing this i i the cancer stuff i think is going to be actionable the first or like the earliest of all this other stuff and we have something that i think we're going to be pushing towards preclinical testing like this year in 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 mammalian models and they we, we're already doing stuff in human spheroid like um, colon cancer spheroids and things like that so we, we're in mammals we're in human you know human cells uh I don't know what the regulatory path is going to be like, but I don't think we're talking years and years. I'd like, we're going to, you know, we're going to start the testing soon. And so, yeah. And if it works, I mean, it's nothing like chemotherapy. So it, it's probably right. easier to trial, right? Because the risks are, I mean, at, at worst, it does nothing, but it's not going to harm anyone. I, I, yeah, because yeah, f primarily because we are using uh, already human-approved drugs. So my 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 vision of electroceuticals are drugs, the uh, ion-channel drugs that are already used in human patients for other things. So people did you know neuro neuro um, neural patients take them, uh, you know, uh, things for gut, inner ear, whatever. So so yeah, I I, I hope we're going to have a slightly easier path because these things are largely already <laughs> safety data already exist. So, so that's my hope. Um, you know, we'll see how we'll see how that pans and, out. Uh, so, being being, uh, if I can speculate just a little bit, uh, Michael, um, I know there are many scenarios. It's important, impossible to predict. But uh, in one idealized scenario, what what would the treatment look like? You have to go to the hospital once a year, undergo that treatment, and then you are okay for the year. And then you come back next year and do it again, and it's. Become a, becomes a chronic condition. Is that what it would look like? 
Um, it's 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 a good question because, and so I, I have to be to be careful and just point out that that there's a lot here we don't know, partially because uh, humans live in such a complex and diverse environment that the term because what you're really asking about is recurrence, right? Like, okay, you deal with it once, and and what the treatment actually looks like, I don't even know if you're gonna have to go to the hospital. It's 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 systemic pills that you take that have some sort of ion channel drug in them. You, you may not need the hospital for that at all. Um, however, the question of what caused the thing in the first place, and was it was it your was it your environment in the sense of um, you know okay you've been you know eating junk and smoking or was it your environment in the sense that it's stress which was started out psychological and so eventually you know the, the sort of became a physiological disease condition. Um, I think, you know, and, and, and th that we can't do in our model systems, obviously, right, both because of the time horizons and also because, you know, our frogs live in a beautiful, uh, you know, tank facility, they're not like doing the stuff that humans have to deal with. So, so I don't know what that's going to look like. There's, um, there's an interesting story here that uh, might be relevant, which is uh, Albert Mason. And you guys stop me if I've already if I've already talked about this because I can't remember anything. But so Albert Mason was this guy in the fifties. He was um, uh, uh, an obstetrician. He delivered babies, and this was in the UK. He he was somewhere somewhere in England, and he didn't like that the moms were getting anesthesia because he thought it was suppressing the breathing of the infant and stuff like that. And so he was looking for new ways to deliver babies, and he came upon um, hypnotic induction, and he started delivering babies uh, with hypnosis without without general anesthesia. So then, you know, it was working and then his uh, sort of colleagues were kind of making, and by the way, I'm retelling this, but there are, there's a beautiful inter interview with him, four episodes. He's, he's unfortunately passed on, but there's, there's a beautiful interview that you can all hear in his own words. Um, anyway, so, so his colleagues start making fun of him and uh, one of them says, well, you know, you think hypnosis is so good here, try this patient. And I guess in those days you could just do stuff like that. So they give him this, this teenager who has um, bilateral ichthyosis of, of, on his arms. So, right. So his arms are like, like just, I mean, just black, you know, the skin is like, he's missing some cell type in his skin. It's just an incredibly painful, like disfiguring condition. So the guy says, well, what do we got to lose? Let's give it a shot. So he gives him a hypnotic suggestion that one of his arms is going to clear up one, one of the arms. So he gives them. And then sure enough. So now there's the, so there's this paper that you can look up in the, in the, I forget where the British medical journal or something where, where you can see that, you know, the kids, one of his arms clears up. And so he, so he was the founder of the field of um, uh, hypnodermatology. So he goes off and he starts a hypnodermatology practice where people come to him and he uses hypnosis to get rid of all sorts of like skin diseases and whatever. Right. So, so that's already interesting, but the more interesting part is the next part. He does this for some number of years, and then he discovers that, yeah, he's curing the d dermatological symptoms, but it turns out that his patients then pick up other issues, like they start smoking or they gain weight or they get divorced or something like they get some other stuff starts to happen to them. And, and his interpretation of this was that um, his interpretation was that basically all of these things have a deeper, a deeper underlying cause. And that, yeah, he was, he went up a level from, from drugs to, to uh, talking to the, to the skin cells basically, but that still wasn't a high enough level because there was some other reason why the skin cells were freaked out and that there was some psychological, and I don't know what would be on top of that, but, but, the, but there was some kind of deep psychological issue that, that tried to work itself out through the skin. He blocked it with the, with the hypnosis. It was still like a little bit too micromanagey and thus um, it found another road and the next road is uh, smoking or yelling at your spouse or what, whatever it's going to be. Right. So he, um, he stopped, uh, his, uh, he's, he stopped the dermatology practice and, and he became a psychoanalyst and, and, you know, he went into therapy and, and whatever. So, so, so this is what I'm saying. Like, like we can, we are still like, I'm saying, oh, bioelectricity, it's a higher level than, than, than chemistry. Fine. But, it may turn out that the reason your cells decided to disconnect and, and sort of like opt out of this nice network is that there was something else that was stressing them out. And maybe that's cigarette smoke, or maybe it's anxiety, or maybe it's some, like, who, who knows what the ultimate causes is, right? And therefore, I, I can't tell, that's a long way of saying, I don't know how many times a year you're gonna have to come back for this kind of stuff. I don't know. Because because I'm well aware that even on the bioelectrical level, I don't think we're dealing with the deepest, if we can even say say that that exists. But I don't think we're dealing with the deepest level. We're just dealing with a higher level than than when people are micromanaging the the, the chemistry. Yeah, under analytic idealism, everything is psychological ultimately, right? 
Um, right. so, so, so that's the bad news because now the play field is much bigger. It's not just a gene mutation. It's the entire psychological dynamic, known and, and, and unknown, conscious and so-called unconscious. Uh, at the same time, for the same reason as well, uh, under analytic idealism, a pill is a psychological intervention. Right, a pill is what mental states look like. Just uh, just like the brain is what mental states look like. Um, and since we are very bad at controlling our mental states, if we can find that pill, I think it would be great. Mm. And even if it somatizes in some other way, um, it may be easier to deal with. If it somatizes, like you realize you hate your spouse then that's that's the level where it should be addressed as opposed to somatizing as cancer. Uh, it, it it gives us a chance to review things, right? To 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 deal with our issues um, in a different way as opposed to being a hostage of something we can't do anything about. So I, I'm I'm very hopeful about what you're doing, even if it turns out, as I suspect it will be the case, that uh, once you block one avenue of somatization, it will blow up elsewhere. But let it be that then, because it's closer to the source, maybe. And, and that's the level at which we have to deal with it. Like anger, I have struggled with anger uh, um, uh, throughout my life, um, because it's not something that is always present. Stuff that is always present is much easier to deal with. But stuff that you think you, you don't have an issue with it, and suddenly comes out of the left field and and you go like, whoa i didn't know this existed in me um that's that's the way to go about it i think to to be exposed to the real issue as opposed to some vague somatization that triggers panic and death and and yeah. middle-aged <laughs> kinds of treatment um so yeah I, i'm very hopeful michael and i'm and i'm very happy to hear that there is one scenario in which we are talking about a few years not a few decades oh yeah yeah i mean all of this stuff i you know i hope to uh certainly the aging thing the limb regeneration thing like all of this stuff is going s strong in a way that i think is gonna you know we're gonna see all this stuff i think in my lifetime i don't think we're talking you know and i'm, I'm 56 so like i don't think we're talking decades and decades i i think this this stuff is coming for sure um, whether it's us or somebody else that cracks it, but but I think I think it's coming. Um, you know, th there's there's interesting st connections here with the with the mind and everything. Like um, Benedetti, this guy this guy Benedetti has has like amazing studies of basically patients. If 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 a, if a middle aged guy in a white lab coat gives you a you know a, a pill of a certain type and says, well, this is a, this is a, you know, um, serotonergic or whatever, whatever it's going to be. And, and it's not, of course. And then he studies, right. So what he does is brain scans and blood chemistry analysis. And he shows that it's not just that you feel whatever you feel. It's like your body chemistry actually responds to it. Well, I mean, that's awesome. But the other question is, I mean, most people walking around have no idea what should be happening to your blood chemistry when you take an SSRI or whatever, right? The vast majority of, of people don't know what the, what the pathways are. How did, so how did those specific things turn on, right? I think, I think this is very puzzling and, and you know, and, and I've been thinking about some sort of animal model for this where, where no one can say that the rat knew what the, you know, what the correct, uh, you know, pathways are for this and really try to figure out uh, on, and almost like, it's almost like a, like if you could do this and if you could figure out what different, so, so here's the experiment, right? So, so we have, you know, hundreds of volunteers and the deal is I tell you what the pill is and then I measure certain things. None of the pills have anything, of course. And, and so the question is, it's like a, it's like a folk pharmacology. It's like, what do people believe should happen from various kinds of pills and how much, um, similarity does it have to what actually happens? And if the similarity is significant, why, <laughs> you know, why, <laughs> why, why, why do we know that? Be, and, and here, I think so, so, something interesting would be, would be found here, you know? Yeah, on our IIT, you know, we are made of many complexes, right? Not, not just the ego complex, which probably has the highest phi, but um, you could imagine that even if the ego complex does not know what the pathways are, some other complex somewhere does know but because yeah. it's not in the same complex as the ego, it can't be reported. Yes. The ego doesn't know, so it doesn't report it, but something else does. Yeah. 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 I think that's really critical. And that's that's something else that that we're working on is um, 
uh, translation devices to let you talk to some of these other modules. So like, you know, someday instead of, hey, Siri, it'll be, hey, liver. You know, why, why, why do I feel like, why do I feel like crap today? And the liver will say, well, it's because your potassium is here and there. And by the way, I've talked to your fridge and I know what you've been eating. And, uh, and, and this is what's going to happen that, you know, and I need more, but yeah, I don't know what. So, so yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I think there's, there's incredible uh, wisdom in these, in these other, um, these other body components and they don't have uh, speech and we normally don't hear from them. And, uh, yeah, and and so we need ways to communicate with them, and this is this is like something we're building our tools to communicate with some of these things. Another thing we don't know as well is what is it like to be a normal human being, right? Because mm -hmm. we are always asking ourselves, do I feel in a way that may somatize as something bad? Um, am I going down that path, or, or am I a normal human being? And and the fact is, we don't know what this idealized normal human being feels right we don't know what it is like to be the idealized normal human being so we don't even know if we are in dangerous territory or not because yes uh, we i'm suffering but well, we know everybody suffers but we have no intuition about what is the deeper relationship that each one of us has with our suffering and i think that can change drastically from person to person. At least I, I think, I sense in different people around me that interact with me in my life, I sense vastly different inner lives, vastly different ways of interacting with, the, with life, with the challenges and pains and issues uh, of life. And, but, but we don't know, we cannot know because we only know ourselves. So I'm saying this because, um, and, and, and look, I'm, I'm not a materialist, but of course, under analytic idealism, matter is mental states. So that pill and that force field in the hospital, I think they would be very useful because we cannot have enough therapists in the world to help take everyone by the hand and help them through the individuation process of analytical psychology we, we are not going to be able to do that but those pills and whatever biochemical force fields you guys can can stimulate and create that may be the ticket brilliant so f fascinating to hear you both uh figure out the future together